dear students this week we are looking at islamic tradition islamization how islam is being established as a religion in indian context how it spread throughout india and the varied reason for it in this module let us explore indo islamic traditions specifically the module deals with the following they are indo islamic traditions little tradition and great tradition the indo islamic little tradition where we will be covering about astrophysation and deastrophysation then we will be seeing the indo islamic great tradition first we can see what is this indo islamic traditions every society relies heavily on tradition the english term tradition originates in the latin root word trader which implies meanings like surrender transfer handing over etc american anthropologist robert redfield says that word tradition connotes the act of handing down and what is handed down from one generation to another according to this viewpoint there are two aspects of the concept of tradition the first is a process and the second is the product of this process a particular community's tradition is constituted by cultural elements passed from one generation to another religious traditions or groups of beliefs practices and institutions used to identify a specific form of religiosity it is an understanding of the supernatural aspect produced by societies and practiced by individuals and groups as we all know india was not a birthplace of islam however india and islam have had a touch for about a millennium in it all began with the arab conquest of sindh since the arrival of the muslim religion in india a large proportion of local hindu population has converted to islam which we have seen in detail in the first module of this week the indian islamic tradition was not from a single source and also not from a homogeneous background the principle of monotheism and the less pronounced principle of hierarchy initiated large masses of india to convert all sections of indian society under the burden of caste system were attracted to the message of equality and universal brotherhood which is the core idea of islam this showed lower caste hindus and other people facing injustice in indian society that islam treats people fairly two forms of conversion that can be perceived in india which we have dealt with in the earlier model they are immigration and indigenization in the process of immigration conversion happened among indians mainly through interfaith marriages with local hindu women to arab traders and soldiers sufis played a significant role at the time of conversion they understood hindu culture and tradition and believed that helping the poor was the highest form of devotion even the sufis used to speak in the same dialect as the people in order to comfort them in this way they removed the feeling of separateness and the barriers of caste class and creed as a result of all these reasons the hindus who were discriminated against and those who were lower in the caste hierarchy considered islam as a systematic exogenous source for a radical transformation in the indian tradition and became muslims according to eaton between 711 and 1750 ad indian islamic traditions emerged pre colonial indian islamic traditions encompassed a vast array of thinking practice objects and performance among them are letters and recorded conversations of sufi sheikhs works by religious scholars epics in vernacular languages romance stories mask inscriptions visual arts qawwali music quran commentaries historical accounts folk ballads travel opinions hymns travel memoirs dramatic performance biographies of prophets sheikhs and more the islamic traditions in so far as they all pertain to the quran or the prophet's tradition in same way from the 8th century muslim communities began to settle in india resulting in the emergence of indo islamic traditions in india the tradition has been shaped by processes of indigenization and conversion throughout the history 
Muslims of foreign origin who immigrated to India adapted local customs and traditions into their lives. Converts on the other hand brought numerous cultural characteristics from their previous faiths with them. Conversion to Islam did not always result in economic gain and structural change or mobility. There was also transformation in the way of life. Though many converted Hindus retained their old talents and callings and did not change their economic standing, there came the need for institutional adjustments. As given by Mormon in his work on the Indo-Islamic tradition, gave an elaborate discussion of the Indo-Islamic tradition taking into consideration the little and the great tradition. He classified the Indo-Islamic tradition into two distinct but interrelated aspects and they are the Indo-Islamic little tradition and the Indo-Islamic great tradition. The Islamic tradition which came into the Indian subcontinent had assimilated with the indigenous tradition which is heterogeneous in nature. Thus formed Indo-Islamic tradition included both the Islamic great tradition and the little tradition from the Indian context that comprised of number of folk customs rights and institutions that are not original to Islam. It is to be noted that it had even developed its own pattern of caste hierarchy. In addition to the spread of Islamic great tradition of the Muslim mystics, the Muslim kings contributed significantly to the evolution of Indo-Islamic tradition. The idea related to tradition of the Indo-Islamic was taken from the Robert Redfield's concept of little tradition and great tradition by Mormon. Now we can see what is this little tradition and great tradition is. So before going into the Islamic tradition, we can see what these concepts are. Let us briefly introduce these concepts as given by Robert Redfield. The concept of great tradition, little tradition was developed by Robert Redfield while studying the peasant society which characterizes civilizations as a complex system of great and the little traditions. Any civilization has a great tradition of the reflective few and the little tradition of the unreflective many. The great community and the little community are the sociological elements of these two traditions. He discovered that one tradition was formal in written form with literate and reflective few while the other was informal in oral form and with no written format with illiterate and reflective many. The first tradition was called great tradition and the later was called little tradition by Redfield. These two types of traditions that differ from one another and have different origin but they are interconnected, interdependent and interactive with one another. During his field work, he noticed that the great tradition was being developed in schools and temples. He also discovered the priests and the instructors served as a bridge between the two traditions. In contrast, the little traditions are working themselves out and keeping themselves alive in illiterate villages. Redfield's theory was supported by many anthropologists including Oscar Levy, McKin Marriott, Milton Singer and Mendelbaum and contributed to the study of civilization as proposed by Redfield. Redfield and his followers traveled to India and researched Indian villages in order to gain a better understanding of Indian society. The little and great traditions provided a useful conceptual binary for defining cultural traditions and changes in those traditions but it also has its own limitations. Now we can see what are the limitations. According to Yogendra Singh, the concept solely describes the cultural change, not structural change. He also criticized the approach of referring to folk tradition as little, thus creating a biased sense of inferiority. Likewise, Dubé also gave an idea about it. According to Dubé, Indian traditions cannot be characterized by binary dichotomy between little and great. Instead, he proposed the Indian society has a hierarchy of traditions that are based on multiple factors. In his view, there are six types of traditions. They are classical tradition, emergent national tradition, regional tradition, local tradition, western tradition and subcultural tradition. 
Now we can see the Indo-Islamic little tradition. In the Indian context, Momin discussed the Indo-Islamic tradition considering the little and the great tradition. He also discussed astrophization and de-astrophization which happened in the social dynamics of the Islamic religion in India. Though large scale conversion took place during the Muslim regime in India, for socio-economic and cultural mobility, the traditional occupations and rituals were mainly sustained. The local or the little tradition practiced by the converts was not compromised or entirely given away by them for the new social structure. From Momin's point of view, we can discuss the Islamic tradition. One distinctive historical characteristic of little tradition of Islam in India is mainly composed of Hindu converts. Numerous Indian Muslims continued to conduct many rites of their old religion even after conversion. For instance, from the Rajput caste, the Malkans became Muslims and continued to follow the practice of visiting Hindu temples for personal ceremonies. The same way, the case of Churihars of Ganges Valley, Mirarsis of North India, who worshipped their female deity respectively. The Rajput Muslims even practiced female infanticide and followed their group endogamy which was particular to the Hindu Rajputs. When sociologists and anthropologists study Indian society, they focus mainly on kinship, marriage and family patterns among Indians. While studying Indian society, the focus of caste system is inevitable. However, it is a component of Hindu social structure and is present in the entire country irrespective of religion and region. Caste as a social stratification in Indian society is characterized by endogamy, specialization based on occupation, hierarchical status and acceptance of purity and pollution principle. Caste, a widespread element in Indian social structure has had a, an impact on Indian Muslims also. According to the studies of Muslim societies, sociologists and anthropologists pointed out that Apart from the last feature of the Indian caste structure, all the other three components are found in the structure or functioning of the caste system among Indian Muslims too. The caste systems feature among Indian Muslims had weak purity and pollution notion. Apart from that, we can see status inequality but not a preordinate hierarchy among Muslims. The hierarchical thought may be due to the acculturative impact of the Hindu environment. This does not mean, however, that there was no stratification among Muslims during the historical period. The pre-Islamic Arabs who brought Islam to India considered themselves superior. But after the conversion, the opposite group of Indian Muslims never attained a status equivalent to Arabs. The Muslim community was divided into four groups according to their occupations. They were priests, warriors, commoners and serfs. This stratification of Muslim is very similar to Varna system of the Hindu religion. When Persian and Turkish ruler took over Delhi Sultanate in 13th century, they saw themselves as superior and robust compared to Indian Muslims at that time. They had a conscious feeling of racial superiority. They opposed the appointment of local Muslims to senior civil and military positions. Muslim settlers in India, like soldiers, poets and scholars, looked down upon the local Muslims. Indian Muslims were forced to abandon small societies with reserved little things and were only permitted to marry inside their own group. Within Muslims, based on stratification, endogamy was practiced. Now we can see ashrafization and de ashrafization which happened within little tradition. The imperial gazetteer of India of 1907 classified the Indian Muslim into two communities as Ashraf and Ajlaf. Ashrafs are high status Muslims who originated in foreign Arab lands or other invading groups. They belong to four ethnic groups and they are Shayid, Sheikh, Mughal and Padan. At the same time, the Ajlaf were the local converts who assumed that they were converted to Islam from Hinduism where caste hierarchy existed before the conversion. The hierarchical system continued even after conversion. 
the ajlaf community included artisan and service castes like weavers cobblers butchers potters and bangle sellers the occupations of ajlaf converts were held on and the practice of untouchability was maintained in terms of mask or shrine entry and they did not accept food from other muslim caste members to climb up in the social hierarchy of islamic tradition the low caste that is the ajlaf follow and imitate the behaviors habits and rituals of high caste muslims that is ashrafs even so the ajlaf community adapt them to identify with muslims of high social status and enjoy honors and privileges this was conceptualized as ashrafization by kora in the process of islamization ashrafization is an apparatus of status mobility which helped muslims to differentiate themselves from the non muslims and kept away from un islamic customs and practices certain customs habits and rituals imitated by the ashraf muslims need not always be islamic in character for instance as stated by zarina ahmed when a lower class muslim becomes affluent they insist their family women to wear parda and they go to mecca for pilgrimage etc which was observed by ashraf alone This longing for rising up in the social hierarchy through imitation seems to be similar to the process of sanskritization of the Hindu religion which was conceptualized by Emman Srinivas. As a result of industrialization and urbanization and through the legislative measures enacted by the government the status of ajlaf community changed. Some of the traditional ajlaf groups became economically and politically dominant. Why For the high caste Muslims it was tough to continue with their traditional occupation in this situation there were role reversal where the high caste ashrafs adapted the customs of lower caste groups that is ajlaf which they considered as low in the earlier years this process may be seen similar to the process of desanskritization found in hindu society as given by majumdar The parallel of the process of desanskritization in the Islamic tradition was conceptualized as de-ashrafization by Momin. In his research on stratification among Muslims in Bihawandi, an industrial township in Maharashtra, he extensively discussed two types of Muslims in the area of Bihawandi and industrial township in Maharashtra. The communities discussed by him were Kokni Muslims and Momin Muslims Kokni Muslims belong to Ashraf caste and considered themselves as the descent of early Arab migrants while Momin Muslims belong to Ajlaf community who are descendants of Julaha caste of Uttar Pradesh who are basically weavers following several changes in industrialization and urbanization the Momin community with their flourishing textile industries in the Bihawandi area became the dominant community in general and economically in particular they advanced educationally too the governmental measures also did not supported the kokni community so they suffered economically now the kokni muslims traditionally ashrafs from the higher caste group started marrying their daughter in momin groups where class caste endogamy was there as marriage rules among the ashrafs in the ester years this process of accepting the change and being prepared to have a marital relationship is the core of the de-ashrafization now we can see indo islamic great tradition the development of islamic great tradition on indian soil was a key factor in the cultural changes that islam brought about we can see some of the cultural changes that happened because of islamic great tradition in india mongols destroyed the islamic culture of central and western asia in the middle of 13th century and many poets artists and scholars came to india and became indian muslims the rulers of delhi sultanate supported them at the time amir kushrau an indo persian sufi singer musician poet and scholar composed a new style of indian music he tried to bridge the gap between the persian and indian music system by combining them 
the development of composite style of Indian music was one of the most forceful expressions of Indo-Islamic great tradition. It was only with the compassion that the Sufis and their followers viewed the Indian great tradition. Great tradition also encompasses music, architecture, Hindi literature and Urdu language in addition to poetry. A composite style of architecture was also a product of process of indigenization. The incorporation of Islamic architecture was to be found in many Indian places in the form of palaces, forts and shrines. The Urdu language is also personification of Indo-Islamic great tradition. In India, the great tradition of Islam has evolved through three major stages. This tradition has been shaped by historical forces and influenced them greatly. The first stage relates to the duration of Islamic rule in India. The second stage took place following the establishment of British dominance. And the final stage is the third stage that took place at the beginning of the Indian freedom movement, which led to the country's partition and political independence. Now we can see what is this Islamization in this context. Islamization is an effective process that occurs as a result of hostile reaction from the original membership group toward another group through conversion. These converts were excluded entirely from their membership. Islamization is a cultural one than a structural phenomenon. According to Maimanand Jahan Ara, Islamization as a cultural process has completed a full cycle in India. It began as a process of external impact and conversion of low caste Hindus to Muslim great tradition, then it emerged as a process of status mobility within the Islamic social structure very much like Sanskritization and then finally regained its conventional status. Many revivalist movements in different periods and places in India such as Fry D movement that periodically arose were influenced by Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab's belief. This gives a historical context of Islamization. Islamization resulted in a trend among Indian Muslims to abandon un-Islamic rituals and features as well as Islamization creating a space for Hindu communities to absorb diverse cultural features from Muslims. Shahid Ahmad Brailvi, a follower of Shah Abdullah Aziz found the Mujahideen movement. One of the primary goals was to rid Islam of all unnecessary features derived from Hinduism and other sources. Some converted Muslims in the Indo-Islamic little tradition were used to following Hindu customs, but Islamization influenced converted Muslims and other non-Muslims to strictly adhere to Islamic law. Islamization has been viewed as a means of economic and social mobility. People and groups apparently embraced Islamic rituals and practices of higher caste Muslims in an attempt to ascend economic and social ladders. Islamization has been used in two major senses and they are tendency to leave the customs and the features which are held to be un-Islamic among the Indian Muslims. The second one is historical process of Hindu communities borrowing the Muslim culture like dresses, food habits and customs. Structure wise, the procedure is similar to Astrophization. Islamization involves cultural and religious characteristics ingrained in the Indian Muslims broader religious or pan-Islamic identity. To sum up, in this model we have discussed the framework of Indo-Islamic little and great traditions as explained by A.R. Momin. Ashraf and Ajlaf dichotomy in the Indian context was discussed from the research findings of Momin. The conceptualization of Ashrafization and de Ashrafization was dealt with. The process of Islamization was also discussed in this model which was explained as a reflection of their attempts at establishing a religio-cultural identity within the matrix of larger Indian Muslim community. Thank you.